I'm Ryan Sakawa. You're watching He Spoke Style. So on May 3rd, we recorded a video comparing the Common Project's original Achilles Low with the Koyo Capri Triple White. That was on May 3rd. And then we published that video just a few days ago on May 12th. So recorded May 3rd, published on May 12th. In that time, between May 3rd and May 12th, there was another video that went up on YouTube that kind of went viral and also was about the common projects that was in comparison with, with Koyo. Uh, this video is by Rose Anvil, and I had not heard of it, though I certainly heard about it when we published our video because so many of you were talking about it in the comments. So apparently in this video, he rips apart a pair of common projects and goes through every single little detail and exposes the brand supposedly as being a fraud, not using the highest quality materials and basically just putting it out there for everyone to see right like that. <laughs> so what I thought I'd do, if you haven't seen that video, I'm going to watch it today and react along with it. And you guys can watch it along with me. If you've seen it already, let's watch it again together. Uh, this should be cool. I've always interested in seeing the inner workings of things. Uh, I don't do it myself, but this seems really interesting and I'm pretty excited to watch it. So let's get to it. Oh, those look nice. Today I'm cutting open the common projects to check out the leather quality and see if they live up to the hype and that steep price tag. I'm so, guessing not. These have been some of the more requested sneakers um, in the comment section. So what do you guys want to see next? I got Birkenstocks on the way and a lot of people have been requesting the Air Force Ones. Which color do you guys want me to do? Just the all white again, like kind of like the all white theme we have going here with the sneakers. And it's time to announce the winner of the Shattered Backboard Wall. And the winner is... Who is the winner? Who won? Diego197501. Congratulations, the Diego. Themselves. The brand is Common Projects. The model is the Achilles Low. The color is white. Um, they're made in Italy and they cost around 425 online. Uh, supposedly, they don't spend any money on advertising and marketing. And I've never seen ads. And for my initial wear impressions of these, they are definitely narrow as... I don't mind them being narrow. I know a lot of you guys in the comments of the Common Projects Koyo video were mentioning that the last seems narrow. I t have a narrow foot, so not a problem for me. To be expected from any style like this. They fit true to size, and the, the only thing I was kind of bothered by was my foot is sliding around all over the place in here because of the smooth leather on the lining and on the insole. That's and not really something I noticed. The initial impressions when I first got these and opened up the box, the red flags were just going up all over the place. What were those red flags? So let's start dissecting these and start addressing some of those red flags. So the first red flag, when I opened this box, I expected to oh, see and cat. smell <laughs> that primo Italian vegetable tanned leather. But instead I saw these little cross sections and the heel here blue on the inside of the leather. And that is a telltale sign of a chrome tanned leather, which is faster to produce, cheaper to produce, and generally accepted that it's a lower quality than uh, vegetable tanned leather. It's not always the case, but I thought... Interesting, I didn't know that. Also, let's note the cat one more time. Maybe just these smaller pieces might be just a cheaper chrome tan leather and these bigger panels are a higher quality Italian veg tan. Um, so let's cut this toe open and the tongue and see, hopefully that's veg tan. Have you ever wanted to do this? Oh my God. Sound is really good with the uh, disassembling. So it is as I feared. It's it's chrome tanned on the tongue. That's amazing that he could tell that from just the smell and opening it up. Well, he also mentioned that there was blue. Now I want to look at mine to see if there's blue on him. And on the liner, the tongue is 1.5 millimeters and the liner is one millimeter even. When I saw the chrome tanned, I was concerned. So I called up Rocky Mountain Leather down in Salt Lake and asked them to send me their high quality, all white leather samples for me to show you guys the difference between a cheaper chrome tan leather or just chrome tan in general Let's and see. a high quality veg tan. So they sent me this piece of Italian uh, veg tan and they sent me this swatch of French goat skin. And if you look at the cross section on the goat skin, you can see there's no bluing in there. 
and it's just an even color all the way through. It looks and nice. And if you look at the Italian um, cow leather, you see there's no bluing in there either. And the, the blue comes from the I want to see process. a side by the side. The salts they use to turn the flesh into leather is what turns it blue. And chrome tan leather isn't all bad. Some of the best, some of my favorite leather, um, Horween's Chrome Excel is a combination tan that's chrome tan and then retanned and vegetable tanning compounds. Um, and it works really good for work boots like Iron Rangers is an oil. I'm wondering if it's not so bad then what, what the issue is. So I'm sure we're gonna find out. Tan leather, which is basically a chrome tan leather with a lot of oils infused into it. It's really durable. It's more um, water resistant and it's kind of a self conditioning leather. So for a work application, Chrome tan leather is really good. I think it's not fair to compare like a work boot to a sneaker, but I guess we're talking about the differences in the quality of leather and the price. So maybe it's fair. For sneakers, when you're not needing those properties, it's oh, usually that's... a cheaper way of getting around uh, making leather products. So next let's ah. see what's on the side panels and what kind of counter is on the heel. I want to get these tools and get an old pair of sneakers and rip them up like this. Must be really satisfying to do. Though like the watch that I took apart, you can't put this back together. <laughs> so it is the same leather that's on the side panels, the tongue, everything, everything's a chrome tan. But the counter is a compressed leather counter. I did a quick burn test is on it. Is that good? It's self-extinguished and smelled like burning flesh, so it's a good sign it's leather. Um, but it is a compressed leather, so it's the extra loose fibers reconstituted into a material for the counter. It's not a solid piece of leather. And then the one thing so I is really that like do a cost like about saving this measure? is they flip that last piece at your heel to the flesh out, so those, that fuzziness is hitting your heel. That makes it so your heel doesn't slip as much and uh, makes it easier to break in without getting blisters on your heel. Next, we're gonna test to see if this construction on the side here, these stitches are the only thing holding this sole on or if, there's, if it's also glued as well. That's satisfying. That's like popping the bubble wrap. Not a whole lot of glue, at least from the sidewalls So that's here. good. It looks like there is some glue in the sole. I think I like that more though, because if you need to resole these and it was glued all the way around, you would be tearing up this sidewall and it might not look as good afterwards because with the leather- Have you ever thought about resoling sneakers? I, I never have. Like this with a heavy finish on the leather, you don't actually pull the glue away from the leather. You're pulling the top layer of paint away from the leather and that makes it really ugly. It just makes it easier and cheaper to resole and actually make a resole possible. And I also did a durometer test on the sole compared to the Converse and the Vans, because this feels really soft. And the results of the test is, toaster will move. The Converse were 22 to 25, the Vans were 18 to 20-ish, and the Common Projects were 12 to 14. Never worn Vans, worn Common Projects, worn Converse. Converse, I, I'll say definitely the, the sole lasts a very, very long time. It does feel a lot harder. Uh, whereas the Common Projects are definitely softer. That wears down much faster. But I have to say that Converse, I don't find to be comfortable at all. So significantly softer. So this is gonna wear out more, but it's also gonna be a little bit more grippy and a little bit more comfortable. So the next question I have is which or what part of the cross section of the hide is this leather from? Is it the best stuff, the full grain? Is it top grain? Or is it the split portion? So this was the thing that I think people were uh, harping on the most in the comments is that the, the, the leather quality. So I'm interested to find out what he discovers here. The best way to tell usually is just to look at the cross section. So if you look at like this veg tan from Rocky Mountain Leather, you can see that grain pattern at the very top but I can't really tell on these ones. So a, an even better way to tell is just to bend the leather and take small slices out of it and see what's exposed. Do it. So if we do this on the full grain Italian veg tan leather, the first cut, I'm just removing that top layer of the pigment and you're exposing that different colored grain. And then the next cut, we're getting into the grain. Next cut, we're starting to see those pores and the dark spots. That's really interesting. We finally get to that fibrous layer that's in that split portion. 
Contrast it against the cheap AJ1 leather that's a split leather with a top layer of plastic on top and take that first cut oh. and remove that plastic and we're immediately to that super fibrous split layer. And then if we go to the common projects, the first layer, we're pulling off that top layer of um, finish and then it looks like we're a little bit into the grain, maybe just that cut seems a little deeper than the first one he did on the, the first leather. A small layer of grain, and then we get to the really fibrous layer. So my best guess is that this is from the top grain area, like a more poor top grain, and maybe this is a younger cow, like yearling or calf skin, so they don't have as thick of a grain. So it's not the best leather. It's okay. Not the best, not the worst. So not full grain, which would be the best. Now let's check out the insole or the insert and see what's going on in there. I love the sound while he's doing this. I thought this would hurt more, but they're not my shoes, so it's cool. Ah, there's the cat. <laughs> So the insert is the chrome tan leather on top and then a layer of poron underneath this till layer. Poron is just a better foam. It's more shock, shock absorbent. And I also see some little brass nails in here. Uh, nails? I'll cut the rest of it in half now to see what else is going on inside of there. Simba. I heard this wasn't good. <laughs> Back to the sneakers. Okay, we got it cut in half. Let's see what's inside. Yes. That's cool. What happens to all this these after so he's done? This is so strange. There's a shank in here. A metal shank. I have no idea what its purpose Why? is. So let's tear the rest of it out and see what's going on. I want to know what the purpose of the shank is. What else is in here? That's interesting. I'm trying to remember if I've taken these to the airport and had to take them off. Would this set the alarm off? <laughs> that doesn't seem very this satisfying. Shoe is very perplexing. It's really strange. So let's go through the layers. Starting with the sole, you've got the rubber cup sole that was Cat. glued on and stitched on. Then you've got a little layer of foam, which they assume acts as a slip sole. Then you've got the compressed cardboard. Above that, you've got the shank, which I don't know why there's a shank in here. It's very strange to me. Is that common for shoes to have shanks in them like that? Above that, you've got the Texon fiberboard, and then we've been through the rest. Oh, and I forgot to mention the brass lasting nails. So the heel must be hand lasted. It's cool. It just it seems strange to me that you would cheap out on some of the materials on the inside, but hand last it with brass nails. Yeah, so what's overall, up, common what projects? The shoe is it worth the four hundred fifty dollars? It's a really strange shoe. I don't I don't fully understand it. Um, but like we saw with the NYX handmade ultimate work boot, this is around the same price. I have a hard time believing that this takes as much time and money and energy to produce as this. Totally agree. And I, that's exactly what I was talking about it being, you're paying the luxury tax for this shoe, whether or not it's full grain leather or, you know, better quality of, of materials on the inside. And, and there weren't some like strange construction issues. It's a luxury brand and it's marketed actually as a luxury brand. So you're paying that, that luxury price tag, whether it's worth it or not. I don't think it's the worst that's out there. It just kind of feels like a cheap shoe posing or pretending to be an expensive shoe. Isn't that a lot of luxury stuff though? You know, there's little aspects of it that you might associate with a premium shoe, but all the materials are not great. So what would I do to make this a premium shoe worthy of $425 price tag? Or yes, tell us. The same price of these Knicks. I would just load it up full of leather, get rid of all these cheap materials. I have a leather insole, leather midsole. Um, get rid of the shank and actually make the upper out of a higher quality leather. Mm. And then I think you'd have a, an expensive premium 
shoe that would last a long time. That makes total sense to me. And I am curious as to the thinking of the founders of Common Projects, because they don't market it really. It's just kind of become this cult thing based on quality. But obviously, as we can see here, it's not totally the quality that maybe people want to believe. Let me know what you guys think. Um, am I off on this one? Um, would you pay $425 for cardboard and fiberboard and cheap chrome tan leather? I don't think that's quite fair to put it that way, but I get what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll make a premium. Yeah, I'll buy it. Shoot, that's like my dream is to, to just do small batch production of like ultra high end stuff. So maybe one day. So thanks for your guys' support. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and see you. I, I like that the cat is a recurring feature of, of his videos. I've got to watch more of them. So that was very insightful and instructive to me. I don't have the depth of knowledge to assess leathers in that way or construction or know what it means. I'm really excited to watch some more of his videos to get inside other different other shoes, other different shoes. That makes a lot of sense. But I don't know. So the main reason I was curious to see this is, is well, one, you guys were all over this video in the comments. I don't know that it level... Uh, Sorry, I don't know that it maybe warranted the level of, I wouldn't say hate that I was getting in the comments, but, you know, I guess some people like to say, haha, you're, you're dumb for buying that. And now I, I know this and I'm, I'm smart and, and you're not. Listen, like people buy things for different reasons. And if they have the money and they want to spend the money on that, you know, that's fine. It's good to know where things come from and how they're made. And this is definitely very eye opening for me. For me, though, these shoes, as I said in the previous video, they're the third pair that I've owned and I've always had good luck with them. I have a narrow foot, so they fit me really well. The sole, I, I like he says, does wear out a lot quicker than something like a Converse. But I haven't had that many problems with them. They, they have lasted three and a half years for me. The Koyos are just as good. I think I would like to see him compare the Common Projects and the Koyos to see whether they're really all that different on the inside. I'm certainly not going to cut up my pair of Koyos, but this was a really interesting video, very educational and enlightening and, and entertaining too. So let me know what you guys thought of this down below in the comments. If you saw this video before, what do you think about it? And yeah, let's just have a conversation about this because I think we're having a good conversation over in that, uh, the video for the Koyo and Common Projects, but uh, this was definitely very interesting. So comments down below, thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified every time we publish a new video. Let me know if you'd like to see other videos like this. I understand that I'm not the best reactor. But anyway, until next time, everyone, thanks for watching and stay tailored.